You ever feel like you're jumping the gun on something you really like to do? Well, there's a very good chance that's happening today. I'm heading to meet Joe Levine. You've seen Joe in previous videos doing these river floats. It's Joe's thing. He loves to float these rivers and catch Kentucky bass. But the key to having success doing this is timing. You've got to go during a dry period. And it doesn't hurt if temperatures are a little bit cool. So that, of course, normally happens in the fall here in South Louisiana. But it's still summer. Now, it hasn't rained in a couple of weeks. So Joe and I are going to go check and see if we can find some Kentuckys floating the Tangipahoa River. Now, Joe has one of the most accommodating wives in all of North America. She regularly drops him off and picks him up after his floats. And the float we're doing today is about five hours in duration. The bad thing about doing that, once you're on the river, you're stuck. You're on that river for five hours. If the fish aren't biting, well, it's pretty much just a nature tour at that point. But hopefully we can run across some fish. We'll see. Joe and I got the boat in the water. <laughs> the clarity is not the best. It's marginal. It's fishable. Actually, if you saw this in most places, you would think it was great. But this water in, this, in these rivers can get almost gin clear. And certainly not that. We also had to rush a little bit because there's a couple putting in a canoe right across the river. And we want to be ahead of them. We don't want to fish behind anybody. So we're kind of making a beeline. Joe is throwing, what you throwing, Joe? A humdinger? Humdinger. Humdinger spinner bait, and I think I'm gonna start with a with an H and H spinner bait, but we'll see. Might have to change. Joe said typically this time of year the fish are not inclined to hit top water, but believe me, I got a whopper plopper tied on because I've seen some of the fish that Joe can catch here on these whopper ploppers, and I experienced it myself last year. It was incredible. What color are you? No, this is pure chartreuse, kind of yellow, really. And that was a brim. Hey. Oh, there we go, Bo. There, that's a good fish. That's what we're here for. All right. He All smoked right. it. That's a, that's a sign. Nice that's fish. a sign. Yeah, he mounted it too. Well, we won't get skunked. Nope. To be honest with you, the bank that we have hit. We should have caught some fish. We should have done caught some fish. More what we got. All right. We ain't had no bites. Not this. Hey. We're here. We're here. We're in for the duration. Yep. We're hopeful we can find something that they want. Sometimes they turn off and then turn on, don't they? I mean, we've had lulls before. This could just be a lull. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. The mouth of that. There he is. Boat Joe Levine, he always calls it and he called it again. It's not a trophy, but he called the shot. I think this is a large mouth. A large mouth. There he goes. I think it's a brim though. No, it's a bass. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Quickie release. Yep. Oh, there we go. There we go, Bo. That's a keeper. All right. Not a great fish, but not bad. Right. I mean, that's that's keeper, wouldn't you say? Huh? Yeah. I mean, he's... Ooh. What are you? All right. Well, it's something. Filet me all. You go. You want to keep him? What you yeah, think, Joe? Yeah. The way it looks. Yeah, let's keep him. Now he hit it like. He was wanting to feed. Oh, you stole. Oh, there he goes. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Bo, you saw that? That was beautiful. I think that was two different fish, don't you? Yeah, I don't know. Watch it. Watch it all. Oh, that was pretty. 
Just don't like that or whatever. Yeah. Smoked it, missed it. That's that's uh, that may be a hybrid. He kind of looks like a. Uh, a large mouth. I think he's a largey. He's got a smooth, he's got a smooth tongue. So you just don't like throwing top water in August. I mean, just typically they don't bite until it cools well, off a little bit. I don't. I don't know if I fish that much in August. I kind of wait for September. Okay. I guess normally in August we don't really have this much dry weather, huh? That's right. Yeah. August is normally pretty rainy. Yeah, usually. Be a fish right there. Oh, oh, shoot! You saw him. Uh -oh. <laughs> I mean, it was a keeper. Oh, there he is. There he is. That's a good fish, Bo. There you go, bro. Get out that. There we go. Damn, that was two good fish. Two good fish right in a row. Missed one, got one. Oh, look what he threw up. Look at that. Is that a crawfish? Let's see what this is. Yeah, it's a crawfish. Piece of a crawfish. That's what he threw up. Sorry to ruin your lunch, dude. Taking the trip home. Oh, there he is. Go ahead, Bo. Yeah, baby. All right. Maybe they're going to turn on, huh? So Joe and I were laughing earlier. Every time I've come with him, we've just absolutely whacked the fish. <laughs> it's never even just mediocre. But today is a little bit mediocre. We're jumping the gun. Joe said he normally doesn't even fish in August. And actually, most... August are very very rainy and this just doesn't happen with uh, with rainy conditions normally September's the earliest you do it yes yeah, September and it really peaks and what would you say October all the way through November all the way through November usually September and October is, is a guarantee Joe and I have had some 80 maybe even 100 fish days counting throwbacks we're gonna fall short of that today but even still even with it being slow we're putting a good number of fish in the boat and this is just so awesome and it's only gonna get better. So Joe, do you change baits as the season moves along? Like do you find other baits to be more productive than these humdingers or or what? Once, once it cools off, the top water is pretty productive. The humdinger is gonna be good all the time. Okay, and your, your favorite top water is that uh, whopper plopper, huh? Yeah, and, and I like doing the lunkalores. Lunkalores, yeah. They, they're pretty good too. And you sometimes also throw a wheat craw. I mean, is that typically good in the fall? In the fall, you would think that would be a spring bait. But right. Love it in the fall. Well, obviously they're still eating crawfish even now. That fish I just caught yeah. spit of a crawfish. Yeah. yeah. Probably crawfish year round in this actually, river. Actually, this float right here, I've had some phenomenal trips with the wheat crawl. Have I mean, you? Oh, look at that! He came up and hit it on top. Good night. That's a good fish. That's a good fish, but oh yeah, it's a real good fish, Bo. Look at this. Oh, that's what I'm talking. There we go. There we go. That's what we're looking for. All right. That fish literally watched it coming out of the sky because as soon as it hit, he pounced on it. All right. It's amazing. I mean, to be honest, I thought that fish. I thought that fish was like three, three and a half. I literally did. I thought he was that big. They fight so much harder than a typical largemouth. I don't know. I mean, he's a nice fish, but man, when he hit, I thought he was a gorilla. Watch it fall from heaven. So Joe is nice enough to loan me this humdinger. It's a blue chartreuse and white. It's got a Colorado, silver Colorado chrome up top and then a gold Indiana blade beneath it. And it's definitely been productive. Those fish that we, we caught, though, they were all log-related. Yep, all on wood. I guess because maybe the heat, right? They're just in the shade. Yeah. Very hot. Oh, Bo, get him. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Like you said, on the wood. On the wood. Definite wood pattern. Like right 
Yeah, off that, am that ambush point right there. We haven't really caught anything on cut banks today, huh? Oh, 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 he's, did he, did he hit it twice? Yeah. See if you got any buddies. Cause it looked like you missed him and then he came back. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by Major Chad and by SportsmansOutfitters.com and by Plackerman's Parish and by Cito New Orleans and by Community Motors. I, I, I'd, I'd say it's the greatest team ever. There's never been a more complete team. They didn't have a weakness. Oh, Bo, look at that. Look at that. Bo, look at that fish. There you go, baby. Get in the boat. Yeah, there we go. That's what we came for. Nice big Kentucky. See, people think you only got small fish on these rivers. Look at that. <laughs> and Bo catches them. A lot bigger than that, huh, Bo? Yeah. Yeah, he was so good. All right. All right. Oh, that, that's almost worth the trip, <laughs> ain't it? Absolutely. I'm not disappointed, believe me. I didn't think it'd be bang up like it always is, but we're catching a bunch of fish. Ooh! Oh, I missed him. I saw him hit it. Oh, I had a bad hook set. You got him? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how big it was. Daggummit. Oh, you got him? Got him? There he is. Get him, Bo. That's a good fish. All right. All right. You hit it three times. Yeah, I noticed. We've had a few do that today. Huh? This looks good for that crankbait. Huh? I said, this looks good for that crankbait. Fish? Oh, look at that. Look at that. He's not happy. Nice. Good fish, Bo. <laughs> Bo, I, that was a bad He was way out. Wasn't he? It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll take him any way we can get him. Hey. <laughs> it's a good fish. Yeah, but he was he was Yeah, you had him hooked good. You weren't gonna lose him. It looked like you only had him hooked in the middle of the body, but you had one in the mouth. Come on, right there. Right there. Oh look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Did he hit you on the way in? Yeah. He did? Hold on, hold on, I'll get him. Now all of a sudden crushing the crankbait. Come on, baby. All right, I've done this float trip with Joe Levine, I don't know, probably about a dozen times over the course of my career. And every time I'm only disappointed by one thing, and that's it. That bridge is our takeout point, so this trip is almost over. Definitely time to make a few more casts, but it's nearing its end. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the Marshman Mass on channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you're notified whenever we post a new video. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh or on the river, we'll see you right here on Marshman Mass on.